Yeah, spend a couple of seconds thinking about this move. <laughs> Let's see this guy's accuracy level. I can't believe this. He tried doing a nice speed run and these things happen. I mean, I, he's, he, he's probably like, you know, um, nothing bad going on here at all. Welcome to another speed run. And um, I'm gonna take you through um, this rating sort of range of about 800 to 1000. This is the first of this and we're going to move up over time and the idea is to basically look at the standard mistakes that people play uh, around the certain grade boundaries. Uh, thank you for chess.com for uh, allowing this to happen um, and very kindly set up a speed one account where my opponents will get all their rating points back so no one can complain and I'm just going to play normal openings normal opening moves to sort of try to work out where my opponent starts to go wrong so this is a very normal position here um, the Italian and my opponent playing all the right moves so far and here I'm going to play d4 and uh, d4 in this position is aiming at going for a max lang attack and this is a very sharp move and often you know when you're playing at lower ratings opponents might be not so used to uh, shall we say um, obscure openings or openings they haven't looked at now this is one mistake that often occurs at this level I see this time and time again uh, the opponent sees a check and he plays the check now this is a complete waste of time not all aggressive moves are good a lot of times threats checks are bad moves and if you're going to do a threat on your opponent's king, you, or any threat at all, it doesn't even have to be as obvious as this, you should always, before you play it, consider what your opponent's best response is going to be. And here, I strengthen my position, I strengthen my pawn chain by simply playing the move c3. And uh, he's had to move his bishop again, and this has wasted time, and it gives me a chance to do something in the center. After the move d4, my opponent really needed to to react in the center of the board. Um, now that he hasn't reacted in the center of the board, he played this very loose check, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. A typical thing you look for in this opening, when you put the bishop on c4, so you could say the Italian variation of the Raw Lopez, is threats against f7. And at this rating boundary, this happens a lot when black hasn't castled. So something to look out for. If black hasn't castled, look at things to do. And here I can either take on f7 first and go queen d5 check, winning a pawn, as I pick up the knight. But when you're looking at tactics, you often switch around the way you play them. And instead of going bishop f7 check first, I'm going to move my queen in, because I feel this is more powerful, because I'm not only threatening checkmate, but I'm threatening the knight. So rather than winning a pawn, it looks to me that I'm going to win a whole piece. And now that uh, I'm piece up, I just got to be very careful. And one of the one of the biggest mistakes again that I see people do is they get winning positions uh, and they relax, and that is not a good thing to do. When you get a winning position, your opponent's going to fight harder. So relaxing, do not relax. So I can either castle here, play it very safe. Or I can even try to start an attack immediately. And I quite like the idea of doing this, but yeah, should we go for it? Let's go for this. Because my opponent has to find some good defensive moves. He has to play g6. And then a, a normal move there would be queen h4. And he has to play h5. Uh, so he has to spot these ideas. After g6, I can also think about playing something like e6 there. That's another interesting idea. Um, the only thing, the only reason I thought about this for a second or two was, is that I'm moving my pieces one way, and doing premature attackulations is not always a good thing, is it? If you can help yourself, so you've got to make sure those attacks are working well. And um, what I mean by that is, if he finds these two defensive moves, my e5 pawn's a little bit weak, and I haven't castled, so I'd much rather be castled before I played this. But my opponent has not looked at my last move very typical mistake and when your opponent plays a move like knight g5 before you look at your own ideas you should look at the piece they've moved see where it's pointing it's pointing at two places so your eyes should home in on f7 and h7 and you must notice 
that this is a very typical checkmate pattern and here we can just come in with checkmate there. So um, 10 move checkmate and only a couple of mistakes my opponent played and the first one was well d4 if you're going to play any opening knowing more than the first three moves is quite important there are many ways you can learn an opening you can uh, um, you know you can do it via ginger gem videos by chessable by chess.com courses lee chess studies but make sure you you have at least a grasp uh, of what's happening and also when you're playing at lower ratings and this goes all the way up to like 16 1800 a move which is slightly odd like d4 it's it's a main line but it's a very sharp line it's often worth it's often worth not playing what the top players play but playing a move that might get your opponent off guard but i wouldn't say a tricky idea because if you play two of a tricky idea that's not good it's not going to work and of course bishop b4 check let's just have a look at the mistakes this is an awful move because it helps my position it was a artificial check and then after this one my opponent had to retreat we notice in these positions the problem here we win a piece in this position and the last mistake is not looking at my move there so we're going to see if we can get another five minute game now and see it, um, you know how this goes so we got 12 points that one so like I say this video really is just dealing with 800 to 900 we will build up each week but I want to start for those of you who are new to chess and um, those of you who you know uh, you know we're going to do it slowly I mean I've got other videos for more advanced players but I'm sure there's a lot of you watching it just like getting into the game and they're like right what do I do what do I do Simon okay so here my opponent is he knows the first two moves I'm, I'm sticking by the way to the rule Lopez in this opening series because I feel the rule Lopez is um, the main uh, the, sort of the main opening um, that most players play it's the first opening most players play and I think that's a good thing so here my opponents played the same line I played I'm going to do what my opponent played last time I'm bringing my knight out to f6 and let's see what he does now knight g5 if you're going to play the rule Lopez this move knight g5 the fried liver is the move that it seems to me most people learn at this stage the fried liver attack is the first because it's got a cool name and it creates threats immediately on f7 and maybe after learning scholar's mate white's like okay scholar's mate doesn't work my queen comes out but if i go for my knight and bishop coming in that's got to be good so my opponent is threatening here and there's only one good way to stop that and that's d5 this gambit is also possible but d5 is the main move so i'm going to play d5 here that breaks the bishop's coordination but again if my opponent's going to play this he sh it's quite a sharp line if you're going to pick sharp openings like this you need to know more theory on sharp moves than you do on like the english opening or a karma d4 queen's gambit opening and the move that i play here is this one and this is probably the second or third most popular choice it might not be entirely sound but if you're going to play knight g5 as white you certainly need to be aware of this b5 move and already my opponent's gone wrong the move my opponent should have played is the bizarre bishop f1 because he doesn't want to lose d5 but after this one i'm going to win the bishop i'm equal in material but already i think black's better why is black better because first of all i can kick this knight away when i want to i've got very easy development and my pawn on c4 cramps my opponent's position so if i go h6 he's probably going to go knight here now i could then take that knight and think about doing something but um, I don't want to allow his knight to get to this good square so I feel I'm gonna play bishop here first I'm developing a piece I'm putting it on a good square but I'm also trying to stop my opponent's idea he's castled he's playing well but now I'm gonna kick that knight away and the knight can't come back to this square now because I'm covering it so he's again playing well and e4 looks a little bit overextended to me so i'm just going to develop my first piece at the start of the game you don't need to do anything crazy you just need to follow the principles he's playing very well he's he's playing much higher than his rating he's attacking my pawn now i think i'm going to sacrifice this pawn because if you look at his development he's still got those pieces over there i've got the two bishops and well he he probably sh he moving too quickly there he should have at least considered this move because now after the pawn comes there, well, I've got two options on pass on, or I could consider going forwards. If I go forwards, his knight comes in, 
You've always got to assume your opponent's going to play the best move. Uh, maybe not a crazy move because this bishop's coming out. Okay, let's 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 move it forwards anyway, because I like the idea of opening up my all of my pieces. But so far, my opponent's playing very good for his rating boundary here. So well done to color zero seven. Now I think white really has to come forwards if he keeps playing energetically, then he should be very you know he should be he's doing well. Um, if he starts going passively, always try to avoid passive moves if you can. Um, why play passively when you can play energetically? And that goes for most positions. You can't always play the most energetic move. And this is, I think, the first mistake he's done. He's gone backwards. And that hasn't blocked my bishop in. And now we've got to learn attacking patterns when you're playing chess. And I'm, I'm sure the next move most of you are aware of. And it is the Greek gift with bishop h2. Now, before we play it, we have to do a little bit of calculation. Knight g4 check. If the king comes back, my queen comes in. I'm threatening h2 and f2. I don't think I need to calculate that much more because my opponent's so far behind in development. This is what's called the Greek gift sacrificial attack. And it was just really, I feel in this game, one mistake that my opponents played. I don't know if this is gonna be winning, but I'm gonna get a big attack. And this is the standard, and again, it's just little sequences of tactics that you need to know. And this idea of bringing the knight and queen in at the cost of a piece is a standard idea. And I'm threatening now to check there and check there. And my opponent may well be able to defend this one, but I can, you know, keep the pressure up. And I like having the initiative. And this move, well, he's gone wrong immediately. He's only looking at the queen going one way. But of course, he's he's got a lot of time, three minutes on the clock. He's not using his time properly. When your opponent moves the queen in, spend a little bit extra to see where else it's heading. And after king f1, he's missed queen f2. That's checkmate. So 15 move win there. But I have to say, my opponent played quite well there. The only thing I would say, if you're going to play a sharp opening, and if you're going to play moves like knight g5, you have to learn more theory in complicated aggressive openings than you do if you play like 1d4 or if you played a more positional move. And I already played this b5 move. I think it's clear he didn't really know what he was doing here. Um, so he took, I think black's probably a little bit better, but then he developed his pieces. He played very well. And here, rookie one, good move. He should have considered taking this one. So I think he moved a little bit quickly here. If you can take a pawn, and like we say, if you can always look at the most critical move, try to play the most critical move if you can. And after d4, e4, again, the most critical move, he, he had to block my bishop, I feel. And going backwards, he allowed this one. And the last mistake, he did not spend a lot of time on this position and he went wrong. And it is so important in certain positions. You know, in chess, you can play like 90% of your moves very quickly. But 10% or even 5% of your moves is where you should spend most of your time, critical moments. So the time, my opponent's time handling was quite bad there. So we're going to stick to the Raw Lopez again. Let's see how my opponent fares here. I'll keep with the Italian variation. I like this move because I like the pressure we get on F7. And after this one, well, I'm following my Grandmaster Gambit's course. So I'm going to simply... Uh, castle here and see what he does. Bear with me one sec. And um, after castling here, he plays knight f6. So again, he's playing some good moves, but the move I play in this position is the interesting gambit d4. And I'm going for quick development. Um, my opponent's taken with a bishop. This is still theory, so he knows his stuff. I'm going to take this one following my Grandmaster Gambit's course and now play bishop g5. And I've given up a pawn to create a nasty pin on the knight. Um, I've also got ideas of f4 in this position. And my opponent seems to know his stuff because if f4, he might have queen here. And now I've got to remember my theory. Um, so f4, queen here looks a little bit scary for me. Now, do, would I then... What would I then play? So again, my me you know, even as times our memory goes a bit a bit funny and so their queen here looks like an interesting idea okay let's try it let's try it let's see what happens so this is the one move again i've got to assume he's going to play the right line and he has played it where he's got a check with his knight 
So I'm going to take on f6. I've got to play quite tactically. Now I know that, you know, this, I know with my preparation in my memory that this is a variation, but I can't remember it entirely. So I know I shouldn't be in trouble here. Now his knight has this one taking here, which is a little bit, a little bit scary, isn't it? Because he has double check, but can I get an attack against here? So what should I do with my bishop? Do I just defend it and develop a piece and allow him to take here? So my opponent has shown good opening knowledge here. I'm going to play this one. I realize that I might lose my rook on a1, but I'm hoping that because his king is in the middle and my king will be on h1, I can bring an attack like this. So he's played this check. Okay, so I've got to move my king. And he's actually... Um, done me in the theory a bit so I know one thing is even at every level you might get done in the opening I'm getting done by an 800 in the opening here <laughs> which is pretty embarrassing I'm going to be a piece down I'm going to take here so I know one thing I'm definitely going to do after this game I'm going to check this queen e7 move and I'm going to work out exactly what I, I, I my memory's just gone so I don't make the same mistake again. Now this position, I, I, when I say it, it's bad for me, it might not be the end of the world. I've got one pawn and I've got an ongoing attack um, on the F file. So it's not tragic here. Um, and I'm just going to now play it quite sensibly, bring my other rook in, but I think my opponent's played perfectly so far. So the idea is to bring the rook to F1 and we're just gonna put a bit of pressure on the F file. And at this rating, okay, maybe I'm relaxing a little bit too much, but, um, if he, you know, let's see how he plays. Let's see if he goes wrong or if he can keep this up. Now, is he going to go bishop c4 there? Um, well, if he finds that move, well done. Let's see if he does. And then I have to calculate takes, takes. Okay, so he hasn't really been looking at my plan. This h5 move is an unnecessary pawn move. He's probably still all right. He can go queen takes here. And after this, he gives up his queen and he's got a lot of pieces. But still, h5 was a slight error. It was an unnecessary pawn move. Okay, so I have to now unbalance the position. When you've got a worse position, you've got to unbalance it. And he hasn't, he's decided not to go into these complications here. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to get all my pieces on this file. And he's now trying to run away. Um, uh, I'm going to play b3 because suddenly this bishop c4 move seems to shock me. I'm actually, I'm actually worried. I'm going to lose this one. Uh, we're okay, but the one only mistake I can see is made is this. Okay, now when you've got a bad position, you probably have to take risks. Now this looks risky, but at least now I have two pawns for the piece. I might as well grab the pawn there. He's threatening checkmate here, so we're going to have to come back quickly and. Um, we're now threatening rookie one. So he's playing much higher than his rating, isn't he, this guy? Uh, so I definitely should have treated him a bit more respect. And I need to stop him opening everything up. I'm struggling here, bloody hell. He's playing another good move. And uh, I'm now getting in trouble here. So, um, well, um, I, sh I should have treated this one with a lot more respect. <laughs> he's he, he's he's doing me in the guy's doing me in and uh okay let's go here we're gonna have to be a whole rook down and let's see if i can make it complicated at all if he doesn't make any errors he's gonna win god a nice calm speed run you lose to an 800 right um well clearly he's as we say much higher than his rating this uh, I'm just going to defend f2. I'm not going to give up. We've got to make it as tricky as we can. Now, what am I think? How am I going to try to trick him here? Well, the only thing I can think of is bringing my queen there, but that doesn't even uh, create any big threats. So we'll put the king on this square. I have one trick. Is he going to uh, fall for any of my tricks? Now, let's come over here. I'll keep the idea going uh, of, of coming into this square. Cool, I'm really, I mean, Rook here looks like a very strong tactical idea. And I think the mistake I've made here is underestimating my opponent. And again, he's found this move, which is a which is much higher than this rating boundary. And uh, I'm probably lost now because uh, he's gonna, there's no way I can decently stop this one. So um, let's have a, well, I, I, I'm gonna have to let him win. So 
we're going to put this on the accuracy level here. So I'm going to sh I'm going to basically have a look uh, at the mistakes I played in this game because okay, you can lose, and and really I got myself in a bad position in the opening. That was that was the problem in this game. And um, if we have a look at it, let's have a look um, at uh, the opening and see what I should have played there. So I'm just going to put it on the chess.com opening um, analysis and we will have a look uh, and when it does it. So chess.com is good for this. You can, you can test your games afterwards. But um, I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I'm calling cheat there. I mean, I, I just don't believe... I don't believe this guy. I mean, look at this. He's got 99.5 accuracy. He's got 800 rating. Uh, I mean, he might not be cheating. He either played that or he played like 2700. Uh, this is one of the sodding things I really hate on online chess. Um, and it really frustrates me. So um, we'll have a look at this guy. But I mean, it, it still doesn't deter from... I can still learn from this game. And the important thing that I can learn from... Uh, first of all, is that after Queen E7, I should probably not go in for the tactics of F4. And I made a critical mistake here of assuming that my opponent, um, basically, my my opponent was going to play n not the most critical moves of this. So this is a big mistake. Always, and I said, always assume your opponent's going to play the best move. So I should stop this idea of allowing this diagonal to come alive and play something else. I'm going to look at this theoretically on my own a bit later, but I'm a bit frustrated with this guy. Let's just have a look at his record. He's a he's um he's got a I'm going to report this guy anyway, uh if we can. Um either that or he played perfectly. Um but it's worth it's worth having a little look, getting them checked out. Uh, with that kind of accuracy. It might just be he played a great game, but it's, let's see how many games he's played. Maybe it's his first couple of games, right? Uh, how do you look at their record? Probably we click on his profile and he's played 409 games and that's quite a high level of games, right? And, well, I'm I'm thinking he 99.5% he at that rating level it seems very suspicious to me. And of course, uh, well, what can you say, man? I mean, what do you think? 800 level playing that? It's very suspicious. Let's put a little bit of a downer on it. Let's try to get one more. We'll check this guy out. We'll see if I'm wrong or he's wrong later on. But I can learn from that. And my mistake was assuming he wouldn't play the best moves. Entering into a complicated position that... I wasn't sure what I was going to play, so it was me. I was getting, I, I was just going to roll into it, uh, and I didn't really think, I didn't really work out what I was going to play against his move. So it's me being an idiot there, uh, and maybe he just knew his stuff very well. Okay, let's go. We'll make this the last game of this little one, and uh, it's going to be a long speed run if I keep if I keep getting games like that. Right? And we're going to go bishop c4 here, um, and we're going to go for. Oh, fucking heck. I mean, maybe maybe he just played perfectly. I, I don't think I've ever got that high of a thing over that many moves. But anyway, um, and we're going to play this gambit again. So let's see if my opponent is be better prepared in this one. It seems at this level, everyone plays these three moves, which is good. So this is the main line, uh, Max Lang attack. And now my idea is the first castle. And I'm going to try and use this e-pawn to create problems for my opponent before he gets castled. So this is the kind of position where if black, again, doesn't know his theory, he could lose very quickly. Now you won't see this opening that I'm playing here played at top level because it is considered that black can get equality, but that doesn't really matter, I don't think. If you can get an equal position, but make it very problematic for your opponent, openings like this can work all the way up to uh, about 2600 level. Um, so uh, knight takes e4 played and this is still the main line uh, and the point now we go rook e1 and we threaten that knight and he has to play d5 here uh, he has played d5 this is following main line we capture on d5 uh, and again we're still following theory from my grandmaster gambits course we go knight to c3 this is a nice little uh, idea where we use the pin on the knight and the queen. 
Uh, he's only a pawn up. He hasn't castled. Queen d7 is actually the move that I recommend black plays. And um, now there's a couple of ways to do this. And the simplest is to play rook takes e4 check and just to win my pawn back. The reason the queen's sometimes quite good on this square is that after knight takes c6, he can take with a queen and he doesn't have to take with a pawn. And f5, he's still playing perfect chess at the moment. And here I've got to play rook f4. I'm trying to remember what I'm playing. And this is still theory. So this guy knows his theory incredibly well. Well done to my opponent. And after I capture here, you can see the difference with his queen being here. He can take there with his queen. Uh, and probably, well, not probably, but black is doing absolutely fine in that position with the two bishops. Um, now, this is a slight mistake, I would say. It's probably all right, but he's going to have to damage his pawn structure. That was check, so I had to take. And after here, well, I need to now get my pieces into the game. Maybe this is another way that uh, black can play. But first of all, my rook seems offside, so I want to attack c6. I want to give my bishop that square and give my knight a square. So I'm trying to get all my pieces uh, to, the, to the right bits. Okay, so he's gone here. Now my bishop has two squares. It can go to attack pawns. And I'm going to go here and attack c7. So, so far, I think, again, my opponent's played very well, especially for this rating range. He can now try to bring out his bishop. But this is, again, he's doing all right. Do I have to worry about this? I could take... Okay, I'm thinking about the right way to play this one. I'm going to move my knight, I think. I need to get my pieces out. My rook still has this square and I can still take on d6 at the right moment. So I'm hoping I'm keeping everything together. What All I'm trying to do here myself is get my pieces coordinating, my pieces in the game, and then leave him with some weak pawns. And I'm quite happy he's captured there because I thought he should have tried to wait until I capture on d6 because you can see I'm just trying to play later on against these guys. Now, if I play my rook to d1, centralize it, will he take on a2? Well, it's possible. Let's try and stop that, but I don't want him getting play along here. So I'm going to play b3, a little bit risky, because in the ending, my pawns are on light squares. And now he's aiming to attack them immediately. Um, now, I could take this one, but that's going to be weak later on. So I'm going to play rook d1 just get this rook in the game give me some chances on this file later on he's got rid of one of his weak pawns now but i'm hoping these pawns are still going to be weak and i'm just going to move my king towards the center later on okay he's playing good chess again here and now i don't like putting my rook on f3 so i'm going to change plans move it over here and now that he's not got an a pawn this looks a bit more attractive to me because i can get my rook behind the pawn and really use that pawn uh, it's a good pass pawn. So this ending I'm quite liking at the moment. And the idea will be just to use this pawn. Uh, but I'm not going to win just with that pawn on its own. I'm going to have to start getting my king across. My opponent's doing the same idea, bringing his king into the center of the board. And I have to say my opponent here is like my last opponent, playing far, far higher than his rating. I mean, this is this is easily 2,200 higher strength. Uh, these Ukrainians, I was, uh, I was, I will say they're much higher rated than they should be. And um, he's got his bishop now to a good square. And with c4, he could even be getting the advantage here with this move coming in. And again, I've probably played this a little bit laissez-faire because, in actual fact, I think I'm in a lot of trouble now. Uh, after the rook coming to this position. Let's see this guy's accuracy level. <laughs> I can't believe this. He tried doing a nice speed run and these things happen. I mean, I, he's, he, he's probably like, you know, um, nothing bad going on here at all. But, um, and I'm not playing great chess at the moment today because after that last game, I'm a little bit on tilt. But if anyone plays 99.5 accuracy and the computer's top choice, it doesn't mean if it's, it doesn't matter if it's Magnus Carlsen or Billy Bloggs you're going to lose. <laughs> so it's nothing really to do with what I can do. And um, we're going to see this. Let's see if he can finish me off. I'm getting quite amused by this now. I'm going to use my A pawn. Uh, and even here at this rating level, they they, they, should, uh, they they should struggle to win. 
uh, I would imagine. I mean, this is like real beginner's level. Now, I've got to move my rook because he's threatening to take that one. And just the time he's spending on each move is a bit weird, yeah? Um, because he's so much material up. Why do you need to Why do you need to think here? Uh, you just play, right? You just play moves. And this is like a very nice way to finish the game. So um, I've lost, I've got 50%. And he's thinking about this move. Yeah, this is a this is a move you need to think about, isn't it? Yeah, spend a couple of seconds thinking about this move. <laughs> and there we go. Bang. Um, okay, I'm going to have a look at the accuracy level here. I mean, this is absolutely crazy, isn't it? Um, quite funny, quite amusing. So we're going to bring up the board now. I mean, I, I could just be totally paranoid and playing like an idiot. But let's uh, let's let's have a look at the, the report and see 99.2 99.2 percent accuracy and again another guy i'm gonna have to report and um because uh <laughs> i mean playing at that level over that many moves it just doesn't happen it really doesn't happen so we're gonna report him and of course i mean you know my accuracy is very bad but i'm a little bit until he played fantastic chess but the reason i got suspicious was uh well the quality of his moves but also around here you're completely winning and he was spending even on checkmate in one in this kind of position he spent three seconds playing this move i mean come on you don't spend three seconds playing that move so what can we say to that a very good start of my speed run series um be back very shortly with more speed run <sighs> more speed run to follow um these 800s on chess.com much stronger than most gms ims i play in title tuesday uh if this is the standard of chess nowadays i'm simply terrified um or maybe it's just a sad uh indiction of the times that we live in and i hate cheats so much <laughs> 